This is our electric machine with a power of six kilowatts. There is an electric motor on each wheel. Its main function is logistical. It can also be used to evacuate the wounded. Its carrying capacity, we claim, is 200 kilograms. But if necessary, it can be loaded with more at a short distance. It can pull up to six tons on a flat surface. It has about 20 to 25 kilometers of off-road range, depending on the terrain. It has a speed of six and a half kilometers on flat roads and about five kilometers on rough terrain. It has a range of about one and a half kilometers. In conditions of buildings and I, in so-called greenery, up to about 500 meters to 800 meters, depending on the terrain. In addition, there is a small radio remote control, so a fighter can walk and control it at a distance of up to 80 meters, put the wounded on and drive it. In addition, we have an evacuation sled on which we can put another wounded person and drive. One can be on the platform itself, the other can be transported on such an evacuation sled. We gave it to the 5th Assault Brigade to test. We will have a new version, it will be slightly improved, but there will be some technical issues. This is Tamara and this is Robert. What's this one? Family? Does the family have any names today? They haven't come up with one yet, have they? From above, we see a remote-controlled turret for a 12 and 7 machine gun. It can be removed and placed on its own separate platform with two wheels, and then it can be simply attached to a trailer and transported to another position. And here we have made a version when it drives itself. That is, we have already connected it to the robot so that it can be completely autonomous. Thus, there is a control panel, something in the hands, a backpack, which is the transmitting part from the operator, and the module itself, which is controlled. But here, it's done so simply that you can separately control the platform itself and separately control the combat module. If the surface is mixed, then it can go somewhere over four kilometers. If the surface is absolutely perfect, straight and clean, it can move up to six kilometers. It also has a folding platform, which can be used for medical evacuation, i.e. Uh, it becomes two meters long and one could transport a person, i.e. everything for evacuation. That is a universal platform. We produce almost all components in this module. We don't make wheels, of course, but we manufacture motors and gearboxes, for example. These are our developments. We produce them ourselves. That is, it is not a Chinese component that is bought, but everything here is of our own production. We just see the situation at the front, that the front line is changing quite dynamically, and accordingly, we understand that the turret itself is heavy. And it is difficult for a soldier to carry it by hand when, for example, they change their deployment there. Therefore, we believe that it should be fully autonomous. We are testing ground robotic systems made in Ukraine by Ukrainian manufacturers. Ravon started working with ground robotic systems in June of last year. Back then, there was not a single codified robot. Today, we are testing more than 50 different robots here at the training ground that can be used for evacuation, logistics, combat use, mining, and demining. And today in Ukraine, there are over 140 different robots being worked on. Currently, as I said, more than 50 are being tested. If I give you some more numbers, more than 13 have already been codified. The first robots contracted by the state are already working at the front. Our main goal and task is to have as many such robots working at the front as possible. We see Ukraine's great success in unmanned aerial vehicles and UAVs. We see great development in this area. I am sincerely convinced that the same story will be true with robots. We are already seeing great results. And uh, we see that any autonomous systems are Ukraine's way to save lives and win this war. Currently, our platforms include more logistics and evacuation platforms. 
because they are easier to design and use. But if we talk about combat ones and the development of this area, we can actually adapt and modify them very quickly. We are saying that even for them to be combat ready, obviously, it still requires communication between manufacturers who make turrets uh, and those who make platforms, or those who make platforms and those who make communication systems. And we also see this as a great advantage for Bravi One to introduce such manufacturers to each other so that they can improve their developments so that they are more technologically advanced. And in fact, today it is very important because manufacturers, even looking at each other, seeing what decisions they have made in their development and how they apply them, will also give very powerful progress for the development of product technology of the teams that exist today.